So what we want to do now is we want to show you how to make some sourdough bread. Sourdough got quite fashionable, it's quite trendy, it's on a lot of restaurant menus. Sourdough is trendy since about 5000 BC. It's the oldest form of leavened bread. So why we all think that we have a big tradition with soda bread, or well, your granny might have made it, this is what her granny's granny used to make. This is what we're all trying to get back to. So the big revolution, the big future in food, the future in bread, is about going back. It's about going back to the past. And this is what we're trying to get back to. Beautiful, beautiful sourdoughs, naturally fermented. We got our seeded sourdough, we got a rye, we got a malt house. As I say, you get a hundred different types. What we need in order for us to make some sourdough bread is to make our sourdough starter, our sourdough culture. The process is very, very simple. It's simply just a mix of flour and water. So we've got 50 grams of flour, and to that we're adding 50 mils of water. We stir it together, and that is simply it. So now what we're gonna do is you leave that cup sit out in your kitchen, just gently covered, ambient temperature overnight for about 12 hours. So at the moment, we're surrounded by wild yeast. It's a good strain of bacteria. It exists everywhere. You breed it in every day. And then basically over a process of using simply just flour and just water, it eventually picks up that bacteria in the air. And that bacteria starts to ferment. It starts to live off the protein within the flour. So it'll start to rise and collapse. Realistically, it takes about seven or 10 days to make it. But for a lot of people I know, I say I'm not making a loaf of bread, it takes seven or 10 days to make it. But the idea is once you get up and going once, that's virtually about it. As long as you don't use it all, you'll never run out. So realistically, you only ever have to do this one time in your life. So we mix it together, flour and water. And about 12 hours later, it looks a little bit like this. So at this stage, we would be due to mix this another 50 grams of flour and another 50 mils of water. Stir it together, and that's it. Again, we let it sit overnight. Day three, we repeat the process. And then on day four, we can already see it's starting to become lovely and bubbly. You can see all these little bubbles becoming lovely and active. And this is the sign of life starting to form. This is exactly what we're looking for. It's starting to ferment. It's all the good things in life. Wine, beer, cheese, bread, all based on the same principle. So you will find it starting to take on a, a kind of sweet kind of vinegary smell, but don't worry, that's exactly what we're looking for. And if you find a little bit of liquid starting to come away from it, don't worry about that either. Just pour it straight back in. So we're gonna give this another day and we'll feed it again and one more time and then by the time it's ready I'm possibly most likely on about day seven but don't worry if you find that maybe on quite day six or day seven it's not exactly there yet don't be afraid to give it an extra day because it will differ depending on the environment in which it's kept in so if it needs an extra day just give it an extra day but now we've got our lovely active sourdough it's got that little lovely vinegary smell you can see it kind of ri it's been rising up the glass. This would have started about here earlier on, and now it's climbed up here. So it'll continue to rise, and then it will drop back down. So at this stage, it's basically ready to go. Well, if I'm completely honest, this is day two, this is day four, and this is year nine. So I've had this for nine years. So as long as I don't use it all, I'll never run out. So all I'll simply do, for example, after we make our bread today, I'll have 200 grams left over. I will simply stir in 200 flour, 200 water, and tomorrow it's ready to go again. Because I keep mine at room temperature, I have to feed mine every day. But for the home baker, we might only bake maybe once a week or at weekends, a bit more time. It can become quite an expensive pet to keep, to keep feeding this thing every day. So what you can simply do is just keep yours in the fridge. Um, because it's based on bacteria, cold won't kill it, it'll just slow it down. So for example, you're gonna bake on a Saturday morning take it out of the fridge on a Friday. Just leave it sit in your kitchen, just to take the chill off it. That evening, say whatever weight you have, for example, um, 200 grams, stir in 200 flour, 200 water, leave it sit in your kitchen. Next morning it's gonna be lovely and bubbly, lovely and active, ready to make your bread. Take what you need to make your bread, whatever's left over, back in the fridge, and that's it. So you have a little once a week cycle. And you find it kind of gets better with age, the flavor starts to develop. So even if you're not baking, you still have to feed it, because technically it is alive. So if you're building up too much, just bin some away. Just keep back enough to keep it going. And the easiest ratio to work off is whatever weight you have here, same way to flour, same way to water. Could not be simpler. Now, in order to make our sourdough bread, we got our sourdough starter. As I say, it takes about a week. Get it going today, you'll be ready by next, next weekend, ready to go, perfect, and make your bread. If not, you can always uh, get down to your local baker. Most real bread bakeries will happily give you some starter. 
If you check out realbreadireland.org, it's got all the real bread bakers across Ireland, and most of them, like myself, quite happy to give you a little bit of starter if you can't get your own going. So with this one, we're gonna make it enough for two loaves. Great thing about this is that we can bake two loaves, we can pop one in the freezer, and you got one to dry fresh in the day, and sourdough comes back great from the freezer. So we got 800 grams of strong flour. So then to this, we're gonna add 460 mils, or 460 grams of water. We're taking about 10 grams of salt. Salt's an essential ingredient. Salt acts as a natural flavor enhancer. So we got our flour, we got our water, we got our salt, and then finally, we just need a little bit of our sourdough starter. So we're using 320 grams. Just make sure you don't use it all. Like you would any other recipe, just add your yeast straight in. And in this case, our sourdough starter. So once your ingredients are all in, just start bringing everything together. So once the dough roughly comes together, just dump it straight out on the table. The gluten forms once we add a liquid, but at the moment the gluten is quite weak. So we want to build up the strength of our dough by what we call kneading. And the idea of kneading is you simply stretch and work the dough. So you will find that your dough is a little bit wet, a little bit sticky. Generally, everyone's reaction at home is to immediately reach for some flour and keep adding it in there. But if you keep adding flour, the dough will quite happily soak it up. And then the more it soaks it up, the heavier dough becomes, the tighter your bread will be. So when it comes to kneading, you will get a lot of recipes suggesting the best technique, how best to knead. To be honest, the one piece of advice I give most people is think about somebody you don't like and just go for it. So I just tend to use the heel of my hand. A little short stretch, and just use my fingers, just kind of pinning the dough between here and here. I just hook it back. And if you can pick yourself up a little dough scraper, absolutely great. Uh, almost like a little extension of your hand. Bring it all back together again, and keep working away. So most recipes will suggest how long to knead for. Most of them will say eight to 10 minutes. Most of them are line. But the thing is, it's very difficult for a recipe to be exact because everybody's a little bit different. Some people are stronger than others. Some days you're just tired. The dough will always tell you when it's ready. The thing called the window pane effect. You can see it's getting elastic, it's getting there, but as I stretch and work it out, it's just ripping, it's tearing, and that's just the dough telling me it's not ready. So it just needs a little bit more work. So just keep on going. But if you do have a mixer at home, feel free to use it. Um, the dough hook's gonna do exactly the same thing that your hands are doing. You're gonna feel your dough starting to change. You can even see already how beautifully and silky, how lovely and smooth the dough has become. Like you saw earlier, when we tested it initially, it just kept ripping, it kept tearing. So by taking a little bit of oil in your hands, it will stop the dough from sticking to you. Nice and gently stretch the dough, working it out. You can see kind of the, the shadows, the membrane behind it. That's exactly what we're looking for. So earlier, that just ripped and tear, but right now it's holding, it's elastic, it's got the strength we need, that's exactly what we're looking for. So, bring your dough back together, back into one piece, into your bowl, and now we're gonna let it prove. With sourdough, however, because it's a more natural process, everything tends to happen much, much slower. So where most yeasted recipes prove for about an hour, this one, we're gonna be looking at about three hours. So you need to give it plenty of time. So, we're gonna let this prove for three hours, so when you come back to it, you're going to be looking at something like this. What we need, we're going to do now is we're simply knocking our dough back. Because as much as we say the longer you prove it, the better, you can overprove your bread. Simply take out your bowl and try and make it into a round ball. And don't, again, don't overthink it. By making it into a ball, you will have simply knock it back and knock all the air from it. So you're kind of back to where you would have been about three hours ago. So now, what we need to do at this stage is we need to shape our dough. So with the quantity of dough that we've made, it gives us perfect portion to make two lovely sized loaves. So when we're shaping our breads, we use the proving baskets. Because it's going to be proving for another three hours, it would just slowly start to prove out and go very, very flat. So by using the basket, it gives the dough support. It encourages it to take on that shape. So instead of proving out, it proves up. But if you don't have a basket, you could use absolutely anything tin, a tray, a box, a bowl. It's simply just something that's gonna support and help your dough out. And probably, I'm sure all of us have a Pyrex dish at home. If you don't have what your mum has, your gran has, always kick it around everywhere. We just take a little bit of flour and dust it all over. 
and just by coating it with a little coating of flour, it'll stop the dough from sticking. So the best thing to do is simply take a clean tea towel. You could use your mixing bowl, you could use whatever you like. Pop your uh, tea towel in, and again, just a good, generous coating of flour, just to make sure that the dough won't stick. So all that's left to do now is to shape our dough. So ma no matter what we're shaping, we always kind of start from a round base. Again, try not to use too much flour, just a very gentle coating if you find your dough is a little bit soft or a little bit sticky. Simply flip your dough over, take all the little edges and push them down to the centre. We go to the next one and let it overlap the last. Around, around you go. You can see it naturally starting to curve around. So now flip your dough over, put your hands out and simply just drag them forward. You'll find that the dough lifts up, turn about 45 degrees and go again. And we keep repeating. Each time, the surface of the dough is getting a little bit tighter. A little roll around, and now we have a perfect little loaf ready to go. Pop it into our basket, upside down. And it's into our little Pyrex dish with our tea towel, just so it doesn't stick. A little dust in the flour. With the tea towel, we simply tuck it straight in. So we've just tucked our dough in and we're going to let it prove again. It needs to prove for about another three to three and a half hours. But the great thing about this dough is at this stage, you could go and put this straight in the fridge and it can sit there all night long, no problem whatsoever. Because with our sourdough, it's moving lovely and slowly. Like where some yeasted breads would tend to overprove in the fridge, sourdough really lends itself to be proven overnight. So we leave it there all night. First thing tomorrow morning, we come back, take our dough out, turn it straight out and into our oven, we're baking away. Our sourdough's been proving, they've had their second proof now, we have them shaping. We've got one in our lovely proving basket and our second one in our little Pyrex dish. So at this stage, they're ready to bake. So your dough should have a nice little bounce to it. You should be able to touch it and there's no fear of it collapsing. So if you were kind of touch it and you felt the whole thing was going to drop, you've overproved it. So the idea is, at least you know for next time, catch it a little bit sooner. So the idea is we catch it on the rise. Have your baking tray ready. If you're using uh, a Peruvian basket or if you're lucky to have one at home, just simply, like a sandcastle, just turn your dough straight out. So you can see all that beautiful pattern which the dough picks up from the basket. And that's what kind of gives this dough a lot of its traditional markings. So then we've also got our lovely little Pyrex dish. Um, it's a great way to kind of improvise at home. So it's been tucked in for the last couple of hours. So we're going to gently waken them up. And all you do, very simply, just to in case it's going to stick, we'll just put a little bit of flour on our dough. So we'll take our lid, you pop your lid on, and you literally just flip it upside down. So take the lid off. Nice and gently, just remove the tea, your flour tea towel. Most professional ovens are fitted with steam. The idea being for the first eight to 10 minutes of your bake, your dough is still rising. So by having steam in the oven, it allows the dough to open up and kind of stops the crust from forming. Because often what can happen is if you don't use steam, the crust forms, the dough hasn't finished rising, and sometimes it can't break through the surface. So I guess it's big bulge out the side because it'll look for any weakness in the dough, or sometimes it just won't be able to rise at all. So by having steam in the oven, it protects the dough and allows it to continue to open up. And that's also what helps to create your lovely little crust. This is why the Pyrex dish is so great. It's so brilliant because no matter how crappy your oven is you don't even have to steam it because basically once we pop the lid on it's going to almost self-steam it creates its own little chamber and it will steam the bread and does the perfect job for us before we do that though we're going to score our bread it kind of dates back to when we had all the central ovens each village would have one everyone helped maintain it so then the only way to tell your bread apart is how you mark it so it's called a baker's signature when we're scoring our bread we use a razor blade things remember when you're using it it's not a bread knife so you don't start doing this just be nice and confident. So a really sharp knife at home if you can. Then you're in full control. And don't be afraid to cut into your dough. Just make sure you cut all the way through. So by scoring it as well, as well as aesthetics, it also helps you to control how the dough rises and gives the dough somewhere to go. So when it comes to baking your bread, 
Don't be afraid to turn the temperature of your oven up. We all have a tendency to cook absolutely everything at 180. It's like the universal setting on an oven. But with bread, we need those good high temperatures. So really crank it up. So you're looking at about a minimum 230 degrees. So we need the high temperature to create that lovely, lovely crust. A great way in which we can create steam at home is by as we pop our bread in, pop in a little Pyrex dish. Once you preheat the oven, just turn it right up, put in a roasting tray to preheat it, and all I'm doing is taking some hot water. Which is going to release that lovely blast of steam into our oven, which is going to help your bread rise.